one topic that I've never spoke on. Uh, it just came to my mind today and I'm like, okay, let's just hit some scripture verses. Um, and I don't want to take too much time explaining it. I encourage you to take the verses home and read it in this context. Okay, we don't have time to go through all of that today. Um, but I want to talk on this one important topic. You ready for this? The finger of God. The finger of God. How many of you heard of that term, the finger of God? Amen. Amen. I, and I know there's a popular uh, movie out there called The Finger of God. There's a second one coming out, and it's all based on the work of the Holy Spirit uh, in the streets and stuff. But um, it's not based on that. Uh, but that just sort of caught my attention earlier this week and this morning. I was not even thinking about it, and it just dropped in my heart. So we're just going to start this, okay? So number one, uh, like I s preached last week about the Logos and the Rhema. The Logos meaning the written word of God, amen? And that's what you have in, your uh, in front of you or in your app. When you have the Bible, that's the Logos. It is important that you read the word. Like I said, you, 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 there are people that don't read the word and then they come up with theology. That's weird. Some people read the word almost too much up here that they study themselves out of God. So they don't believe God anymore, which I don't understand. When you read the Word and you see God, the thing is, you can read the Bible from what you want to hear. That's dangerous. It's very dangerous. That's how you come up with your own theology. You come up with your own opinion and say, well, the Bible said this. Very dangerous. So you have the Logos, which is the written Word, and then you have Rhema, which is the spoken Word or the experiential Word where God speaks into your heart. God speaks His love, His message. And that is so important. Okay? And, and of course, there's, sometimes people say, I hear the voice of God and it's completely contrary to the Word of God. Completely contrary to what the Bible says. So it's important that you read the Bible. Okay, number one. And secondly, meditate on what you've read because then you hear His voice speaking to you. Alright? Anyone can hear God's... I mean... Anyone can hear the voice of God, but disciples can hear that intimate voice of God speaking His secrets to you, speaking His heart to you, speaking His opinion, His perspective to you. And that's the privilege we have as children of God. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. So, okay, the Word is there, the Logos, the Rhema, and then there's the Spirit, and this is where you read the Word of God with the help of the Holy Spirit. Alright? You can buy all the commentaries you want. You can buy all the dictionaries you want and study to death. But you cannot understand or receive a revelation of God until the Spirit of God reveals it to you from the Bible. Alright? So anytime you read the Bible, you say, Holy Spirit, come and teach me. Come and speak to me. And, and, and like I said, sometimes it'll be that one verse and you'll have to close the Bible and be like, I need to take this verse throughout the day. Or you might end up reading seven chapters and see a big picture of what God is speaking. And then you meditate on it constantly, just thinking about, man, that is so awesome. Oh, that is so big, God. Oh, what are you saying, God? And so then begin to hear the voice of God. Are other fans cranked up by any chance? Because I can just see the, the warmth just hitting us and we're going like this. Even I'm also struggling a little because it's pretty warm. Um, so j just crank up the, the fans if it's low. I don't mind if you're squeaking. Some of the fans like to squeak. <laughs> okay, so, so you have the Word and the Spirit. And here, as I began to, to meditate on that, I also realized, okay, uh, how many of you remember the armor of God? And what is the sword represent? The Word of God. But it's called the sword of the, which is what? The word of God. So the word of God and the spirit go hand in hand. So Shiloh, disciples, children of God, let me encourage you believers, when you read your Bible, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Bible says, he's a counselor, he's a comforter, he's a teacher. He will guide you into all truth. And even, even Jesus said, my, he will remind you of the things I have taught you. So let's say you don't have a Bible in front of you and you've got to answer someone's question. The Spirit of God will remind you what you have learned. Hey! So, okay, so let's just get started before I get ahead of myself. Um, 
Okay, so the sword of spirit. So then I, it came down to this one term, the finger of God. So look at Genesis 4.15. We're just going to hit it. Boom, boom, boom. Just, so Dario, let's get ready to go quickly then. Uh, Genesis 4.15. So the Lord said to him, therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance will be taken on him. Then the Lord, say this out loud, put a mark upon Cain so that no one finding him would kill him. In other, uh, in, in other words, it means the finger of God was on Cain. How many of you know the story of, story of Abel and Cain? Where Cain killed Abel and Cain refused to repent. But yet the mercy of God protected him. And so the finger of God put a mark on Cain, on Cain in such a way, if anyone saw Cain, he would not, they would not touch him. They would not kill him. This was before the law even came to pass. And so as a result, you can see the mercy of God. Can you see the mercy of God even for a murderer? Hello. So if there's, if there's a murderer in, in prison that you know of, pray for them. Because the mercy of God is available for them. The grace of God is available for them. All right, so here you can see God's mercy. They put a mark on, on Cain. Next uh, is Genesis 8.4. I love this. Man, I love this. The ark rested in the seventh month. Now, this is Noah's ark. How many of you know the story of Noah's ark? All right. On the seventh day of the month, on the mountains of what? Ararat. Okay, do I have another verse there? Nope. Okay. So on, the, on those mountains, the name, the word Ararat means, uh, let me, it means a chain of mountains, okay? So, so the mountains of Ararat was not just one mountain, there were a, a chain of mountains. Now look at this. Now Ararat's highest point, like this mountains, highest point is called by the locals the finger of God. Isn't that crazy, okay? So the ark rested on this highest point of the mountain. In other words, Noah's ark rested on the finger of God. Think about that. Think about it. When you read your Bibles, let the Holy Spirit illuminate those scripture to you. It is beautiful. So Noah, look, look at this. Noah, number one, entrusted himself to God. Number one, he didn't see rain or flood in his life. And here God is saying, I'm going to bring, bring rain and I'm going to bring flood. Listen. There was no evidence of rain or flood in front of Noah, but yet Noah believed God. Why? He heard God's voice. Are we looking for an evidence and say, Oh God, only if I see an evidence, then will I obey. That's why Noah was counted as a righteous man. Because he didn't look for a sign to say, Then I obey you. He says, Yes, sir. And for 120 years, he built that ark. <laughs> Some of us will give up by the first year, say, God, rain or not, I don't care. I'm not building this thing. It's too big. But because he heard God speak, this is why hearing the voice of God for your life is so, so important, church. Because even if it doesn't make sense, circumstantially, you still ought to obey him because you know the end. God always reveals the end from the beginning. All right? For your marriages, for your job, for your future, for anything, you talk to God and He will give you the end from the beginning. So even when you're going through the struggles of life, you can keep on walking. Even though there's no evidence of hope, even though there's no evidence of life, even though there's no evidence that there's a chance something will work out, but because God spoke to you and says, don't worry, at the end of this journey, there is complete hope. You still keep walking. Can I get an amen, church? If that is for you, receive it. Because oftentimes we wait for an evidence. We wait for something physical to manifest, to prove that God heard, sorry, God spoke to you, to prove that, oh yeah, that is God. Can you believe without an evidence? Because faith is the evidence, okay? It is not this physical evidence that's, that tells you, oh, God is real. Faith, believing in God, is the evidence of things hoped for, of things not seen. So we don't live by sight, we live by faith. Okay. So here Moses entrusting himself and his family and the animals to the hand of God. The ark rested on the finger of God. 
called a rarit. All right? Okay, next. Look at this. Psalm 8, 3. Psalm chapter 8, verse 3. I'm hoping you can finish early so you can go, all, go get ice cream or slushy. <laughs> when I consider your heavens, it's hot. I can feel it. The work of your, say this out loud, fingers, the moon and the stars which you have established. So when you look at the heavens, what do you have to consider? It is the work of what? Any time you look at the universe, any time you look at earth or the planet or anything around you, you see that it is the finger of God. You know what? I think, you know how artists put a signature on their art? I think everything has a signature of God on them. Everything. Including you. Look at the next verse. Isaiah 64 verse 8. But now, O oh Lord, you are our our Father, we just saying the Father in heaven. Our Father, we are the clay, and you are our, and we are all the work of your hand. Oh, man. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are made by the finger of God. <laughs> Woo! When you know that you've been made by the finger of God, no one can put you down, whether racially or, or through prejudice or through any kind of thing. Because you know what? When people make fun of you for the way you look, you can tell yourself, but I'm made by the finger of God, and that's all that matters. <laughs> so when people make fun of you, remember, they didn't create you. God created you. So you got the signature of God in your life. Woo! Some of us got to know who the author of our book is. Some of us got to know who's the signature that we carry. Some of us got to know who's the artist of this bald-headed man. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Even the very color of your, screen, of your skin is the finger of God. Amen. Don't let anyone put you down because you are of this color or that color. I don't care. We are created by God. All right. Beautiful, isn't it? The finger of God is marvelous. Okay, look at this. Uh, Exodus 8, 19. So we'll go just backwards. Exodus 8, 19. And then we'll go to 31. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, Okay, now how many of you remember the ten plagues of Egypt? Ten plagues of Egypt. This is only the fourth one. Look at this. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, Say this out loud. This is the finger of God. Nevertheless, Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he did not listen to them. Okay, it's because... The, uh, the, the fourth sign was, was uh, Nat. And so every, till the fourth sign, every magician could say, oh, I can copy that. I can copy that. I can copy that. And when the fourth sign came, they said, we can't do that anymore. Because the Bible says they tried to do it and no, no gnats or flies were coming out. A tiny little thing that they were hoping to create, God created and made a shameful thing of them and said, I made these little things to bug you. Bugs are, made to, um, are meant to bug us. Do you know that? <laughs> That's what they called a bug. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then the magicians, <laughs> and the magicians just gave up on the fourth sign. I thought by the tenth sign they would give up. On the fourth sign, the magician said, this is the finger of God. We have nothing. We, we can't even do this. Ain't that awesome? Okay, next verse. Church enjoying this so far. Amen. Let me tell you, each one of you has a finger of God. Go and find out, Lord, what is your signature on me? What does it look like? All right? Uh, okay, Exodus 31, 18. Exodus 31, 18. And when he had made an end of communing with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses the two tablets of testimony. The, uh, the Betsy uh, recited that, the Ten Commandments, right? Right there, look at that. He gave Moses the two tablets of testimony, tablets of stone, say this out loud, written with the... Hey, Scripture is written by the finger of God. Amen. Yes, it might be written by different authors, but they were hearing and being revealed who God is, and they were writing basically the finger of God upon these scripts. Hallelujah. And the amazing thing is, it was written by his finger, which means there was fire involved. And what is fire in the Bible? We sing, fire, 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 fire fall on me. The Holy Spirit. 
so there you go the word and the spirit go to hand in hand otherwise it's just dead words it's just a history book the spirit of god was there forming the 10 commandments written by the finger of god oh look at this daniel chapter 5 5 and then 24 and 28 so daniel chapter 5 so you can go home and read all this in his context yeah keep going daniel chapter 5 immediately fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace okay do you remember this this is the story of daniel the writing on the wall where they were parting away and then also a finger shows up and wrote judgment on them okay and the king saw the back of the hand that wrote uh, and then 24 or 28 whichever the, the next one is there then the hand was sent from whom him and the inscription was written keep going this is the inscription that was written many many tekel uprasing this is interpretation of the message keep going many means god has numbered your kingdom and put an end to it man when the finger of god is used for judgment it is scary god saw that it's like that's it your kingdom is coming to an end God, okay, te Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and are found wanting. Next. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. I think there's one more. Yeah, one more? No, that's it. And then, of course, go home and read the, read the full chapter. And what happens? Sure enough, that kingdom was, was overthrown. Man, when God speaks, the word of God will not come back void but it will go and accomplish what was spoken. Do you believe in the word? Do you believe in the word, church? Then put your trust in his word. Put your trust in his word. All right, I'm going through this fast. Okay, now we're going to New Testament. John chapter 8, verse 6. I love this. Okay, so you saw the finger of God uh, putting judgment. You saw the finger of God uh, writing the laws. Now look at this. Then they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. Now, this is a story of the adulterous woman brought to Jesus. And they were ready to stone her. And they were saying, Jesus, what do we do? Let this woman go or, or kill her? Only two options. But Jesus stooped down and say this out loud. And wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not. So while people are saying, hey, you have two options. Kill or not kill. What do you want? Jesus, I have a third option. And he just basically... The finger of God also represents the grace of God. The grace of God. And look at this. Next verse. Oh, we skipped that. All right. And, he, and what does he do? He tells the people, well, anyone that's without sin, let him cast the first stone. Everyone left. And only she was there. And he went to her and said, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. Amen? Jesus doesn't condemn you. That finger was his grace for that woman. While everyone was ready to kill her, he said, nope, but my grace is sufficient for her. Luke eleven nineteen. 19, this is where we're closing. Luke eleven nineteen twenty. 19, 20. Now, if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, okay, so now here's the story. I always like to give the context where there was a, a, a man who was deaf and, and blind and who... who who was basically demon-possessed. So when, us, when he was demon-possessed, he could not hear and he could not see. So obviously the man had no faith. And Jesus cast the demon out and his eyes were open, his ears were open, and he was healed. And of course, you know, the Pharisees came and said, who did this? And he said, well, the man healed me. He said, oh, no, 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 this man is of the devil. So this is here, him. Je they challenged Jesus and this is what Jesus said. Now, if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Okay? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons with what? Say this out loud, church. With what? With what? The finger of God. No doubt, the kingdom of God has come upon so if I cast out demons by the finger of God, guarantee the kingdom of God is already here. I was talking to another uh, minister. He actually came and visited us last Sunday. And he said, Pastor Bob, the Holy Spirit is already here. 
and he was talking about the community. He said, it's already here. All we need to do is start doing stuff. Start moving into it. Oh, let's just think about it. Oh, let's pray about it. Oh, let's just debate about it. By that time, whoever was supposed to be ministered already left the town. We live in a transient community. How many of you are aware of that? We live in a transient community. Sure, pray about it. Here's the thing about hearing the voice of God. When you walk in confidence with the Lord and He's daily talking to you, you don't have to pray about it, you just walk it. Because you walk in obedience. Do you think Noah was praying about the flood? He was just going about his business until God spoke and he said, yes sir, and he went ahead. Far too many as Christians, oh no brother, I'll pray for you. Don't pray for them right there. Unless they say, see you later, if there's a door of opportunity to pray for them, pray for them right there. I had enough of the pray about it concept. It's an excuse. It's a lazy excuse for us Christians to use. Let's pray about it. Is this all right I'm preaching with this passion on this topic? Because we need to be people that not only just talk faith, we've got to live faith. Bible even says faith without works is dead. If you believe in God, walk it out. If you believe He's a miracle worker, walk it out. If He is a healer, walk it out. If the Holy Spirit is the power of Christ that does great things, walk it out. Amen. You begin to walk, church. Hey, Jesus paid it all, sent His Holy Spirit. Now Christians, disciples here at Shiloh, begin to walk it out in your community. Don't even bring them to the pastor, I beg you. Don't even bring them to us pastors. You pray for them right then and there. I'm serious. Right there. And if you don't know the answer, now you know what to do. Open the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Saying, God, I was brought in the situation where I had no answer. What would be the answer, Lord? Just watch how He will teach you. And then bring them to church so we can say hi to them. Amen? Too many dependency on the pastor. Well, the pastor here, let him go around. I'm only one man. But imagine if there's a hundred of us going about and doing the works that Christ has given us. Going to the hospitals, bringing healing. Man, there was someone I, I heard who died uh, in the hospital because he, he was old. He, he fought cancer for many years. And, you know, the typical, when someone dies, you grieve. But the whole room began to worship and praise the Lord. I, I think it was someone in the, in the other room or just in the same hospital was healed at the same moment. You see the power of God? That's why I challenge even our conversation. It's flu season. We need to get our shots. Stop it. But pastor, that is common sense. That is reality. There is reality and there's God, God reality. It's like someone say, well, until you get a real job. I'm like, really? Past, pastoral, pastoral is not a real job? It's the same thing. Well, in the real world, pastor, well, I am looking at the real world. I'm looking at heavenly perspective on your situations. Because on an earthly perspective, it seems hopeless, but in a godly perspective, there's always hope. Amen. There's always hope. Because I see the finger of God on you all. And in closing, what is the finger of God? And I love how the Bible just answers it. You don't even have to struggle. Matthew, same context, same story, but Matthew gives his perspective. Matthew 12, 27 to 28. Look at this. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, okay, it sounds the same, the same context, same story. By whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be judges. But if I cast out demons by what? The Spirit of God. In Luke it says the finger of God. Then the kingdom of God has what? How many of you believe the Spirit of God is already here, church? How many of you believe that the Spirit of God is already working in Edmonton? How many of you know that the Spirit of God is already working in your homes? Then trust me when I say this, the finger of God is already writing their story. Because the finger of God is the same as the Spirit of God. Hebrew, Greek, I don't care, I, I did my study. And because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, oh, the kingdom of God is already here, amen? Ain't that something, church? 
So let's not wait around. Wait for someone else to do something. Let's all pick up our cross and follow Him and see the finger of God in your life and touching other people's lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Do you mind? Wherever you see the finger of God, church, that's God's story. That's the Holy Spirit doing His work in you. That's the Holy Spirit doing His work in your family. Man, it might seem rough. It might seem like nothing's working. But the Spirit of God is working behind the scenes. The Spirit of God is working behind the scenes. I don't want to take too long today, but I want to, as the Spirit leads, I want to just do some personal speaking to people, just personally. But right now, with eyes closed, just you and God right now, say, God, could I see your finger in my life? Where were you working? Where have you been working in my life, God? Show me. Where have you been working in my life? Thank you.